In a previous video, I showed you how to do a simple uh, linear regression. In this one, I'm going to show you how to do a multiple regression or path analysis where there is a mediator and um, multiple endogenous variables. So over in M+, we're going to use our original regression input, um, which you'll have if you followed along from a previous video. And we're going to just copy all this into a new input which we'll call um, multiple regression or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call this path actually. Path analysis. Path analysis. And the file name is the same which means the variables are the same but the variables we're going to use are going to be different. Let's say we want to test a model that looks like this where we have one dependent variable here um, preceded by a couple mediators, preceded by a couple independent variables. Um, and we want them to be all related like this. The way you do this in M plus is like this. Let's see. First off, we got to ring in the right variables. Useful enjoyment, decision quality, and then frequency and experience. Let's see if I can remember that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this line here and paste it down here in this line after variables are, use variables are. I'm just going to paste that down in there. Uh, we're not using early adopter. We are using decision quality and usefulness and enjoy. We're not using child order. And we're not using gender. So now we have just the variables we're going to use. And what you do here is instead of uh, a very simple model like this, you specify a fairly complex model. Again, we had decision quality as our dependent variable, and as our mediators, we had enjoy and useful, which is what we need to start with anyway. And then we add to this um, the middle part, where we say enjoy and useful. So enjoy C, space, useful C. And again, you could uh, just copy and paste these on. Let me go over here, change this to caps, just so you can see oops, where the syntax is. Okay, on uh, exp space freq, semicolon. So what this is saying is do a regression where the dependent variable, the y variable, oops, not there, I wish I could see my mouse, uh, where the y variable is decision quality. And the things predicting it are enjoyment and usefulness. And then add to that as part of the path analysis where you have enjoyment and usefulness being predicted by experience and frequency. And the last thing we're going to do is something we learned from our CFA. We're going to change our output uh, to include standardized along the X and Y. There you go, standardized values. Let's save that. Let's call it um, path, M plus path. M plus path, save that, run it. Hopefully you don't get any errors. And a few things we're gonna look at. Um, this isn't terribly long output, so let's just go ahead and look at this to start. Um, just some summary information, some univariate statistics will be next, as always, with the skewness and kurtosis, and the means, and did it give us standard deviations this time? Uh, nope, but you can calculate them from the variance. Okay, and model fit. As always, we're looking for the same numbers uh, with RMCA less than 0.05. In this case, it's not, so there's a terrible model fit. Um, and the CFI is very low, uh, same with the TLI. And uh, SRMR is also no good. So whatever values we do observe here, uh, we can't really rely on them. We'd have to change our model to address um, those things. We could actually ask for modification indices um, in our assessment. Maybe we'll do that next. Um, but here are the results. These are the unstandardized estimates. We're actually just going to scroll down to the standardized estimates here. You can see which ones are significant in that two-tailed p-value column. Uh, looks like most of these effects are significant. We can go down to the very bottom of this file to look at the r-square table and we can see that all the r-squares, all the endogenous variables, are being predicted um, uh, adequately. So p-values are significant for those r-squares, um, although some of them are fairly small. A 0 0.072 is not a very high, oops, wish I could see my mouse, uh, 0 0.072 is not a very high r-square, although it is significant. 
Now what we can also do is we can look at the diagram. If you hit Alt D or go up to Diagram, View Diagram, this will show us our model. Uh, these are the unstandardized results. Let's go to View and make sure we're looking at STDYX estimates. Here are the standardized results um, with the standardized regression weight on the line and the standard error in parentheses. That is not the p-value. Um, and then the error term pointing at any endogenous variable. Um, these are not the R squares pointing at them. It's just the error. Uh, to see the R squares, you got to go to that output again. Anyway, so that's the model. Uh, you can copy this to PDF, uh, file export to PDF, and use it as a picture in a report or in a PowerPoint. And that's how you do that. Let's see real quick if we can do modification indices. I'm going to close this diagram and close this output. Go to my input and I know that there is a way to do modification indices. Um, oops. There we go. Um, do I just hit space here? Mod indices. Again, I'm, I'm new to all this, so I'm not sure if this is actually going to work. Let's try it. Hey, it ran. Cool. Uh, let's see if it gives us what we want. Um, let's just scroll down. Come on, scroll. And we're going to get the basic stuff to start. And I'm guessing modification indices are going to be below most of this. Let's see. Modification indices. Cool. Um, it is saying that we should have, uh, where's my mouse? Here we go. We should have used usefulness to predict enjoyment. And we should have used decision quality to predict enjoyment or had some relationship between the two. And usefulness and enjoyment and decision quality and usefulness should have all been related. And if they had been related, we would have had much better model fit. Um, so, it said we had with statements. Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, so uh, those are. I think it wants me to co-vary those somehow, but they're endogenous, so I can't. Uh, so what we could do, if we wanted, we could um, include these. We could say that enjoyment and usefulness are co are, are related. Let me try that real quick in the input. So decision quality, enjoyment and usefulness, right here, enjoy and usefulness. I'm going to also say that the more you enjoy something, the more useful you find it. So that would be useful. Uh, C on enjoy C and you see when we add this what's gonna happen let me save this you recall our model fit was horrendous right um, in fact let me just go back here so you can see exactly what our model fit was uh, if I scroll up here it is our CFI was 751 pretty bad so let's go ahead and run this new one where we accounted for that new path run that and let's look at our, our new CFI. It was 751, and now it is 1. How about that? That looks like an error almost. Uh, let's look at the diagram. Here's the diagram. Um, and it's just saying connect enjoyment to usefulness as well. And I can. I should be able to move this diagram um, use selection tool and let me move that there we go uh, you can see there's a very strong effect from enjoyment to usefulness um, and so now that that is now that that is accounted for we have good model fit so we can rely on the estimates we observe in this model um, we can also if we want to go back and see our, were there other modification indices that would have made it even more powerful um, or accurate. Let me zoom and go down. Keep on going. And it says no, no, there were no modification indices uh, that we could add at this point. Cool. So that's it. That's uh, how you do a complex path model in M.